Hello and welcome to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather and this is my buck Samson. He's one of two Californian breeding bucks that we keep here on our homestead and his main purpose here is to make kits. It's really important when you buy your breeding stock that you buy high quality healthy animals because it's really going to make or break your experience with rabbits to have great quality rabbits and get great quality kids out of them. So I'm gonna go over a few things that I look for when purchasing breeding stock for my purposes on my homestead. We like to grow as much meat as possible, as fast as possible, with as few inputs as possible. And we do sacrifice a little bit on, you know, fur color and things like that. So really what's important to me may be different than what's important to you. I'm really gonna just cover things that are important as far as meat animals go. So Californians are bred to put on as much meat as possible with as little inputs as possible. But let's say you wanted to purchase a Rex rabbit. The weight minimums and things that I'm gonna be talking about may not apply to those rabbits. And so don't discount the rabbit that you want necessarily. Based on my recommendations, I'm really only talking about meat specific breeds. So as far as breeding stock goes, it's important that when you buy your kits that you ensure that they were of fryer size by about eight to 10 weeks of age. And with Californians, that's five pounds by about uh, eight to 10 weeks of age. So if you're able to have the kits weighed before you buy them, that's ideal. Maybe have them weighed before you take them home. Or in the very least, see if the breeder has some good records to show how, how much weight the kits were putting on by about that age. So Samson is a very good looking boy. He um, He's ARBA registered, and he came from a lady who had a show breeding herd. And so he looks very, very good. When you are visually looking at a rabbit for, for meat purposes, you want to make sure that they basically have great muscling all around. Sometimes with rabbits, it's hard to get them to have great muscling on their front legs. And having a meat rabbit that has the muscling on the front legs is really going to matter in the long run. It just means more meat for your family. So he's setting up pretty nicely for me here. You can see he looks kind of like a basketball. He's nice and round. He's got a really great top line here and his back portion is super, super wide. Like I don't, I have to use my middle finger. I can't even get my pointer finger and thumb around. And when you look at the rabbit from the top down, you want to see as equal of a proportion from back legs to front legs as you can. Sometimes they're gonna be a little bit more narrow on the front end because those back legs, it's really hard to match those back legs with the front legs, but you really don't want the rabbit to be teardrop shaped. That's not what you're looking for. That's not gonna be a great front end for a breeder rabbit. There's also many health things that you want to check off of your list to make sure that you're bringing home breeding stock that isn't going to just bring disease to your farm. So in the case of rabbits, you never wanna see any kind of dripping coming from the mouth or the ears. Sometimes if it's really hot, and maybe the rabbit's been in a box, they'll have a little bit of drooling around their mouth, but you don't want any weeping or crusty bits coming from the eyes, nose, or mouth in general, and you want to check the insides of their ears. So you really shouldn't see any bloody or crusty bits in there that could indicate that there are mites, and ear mites can be a real bear to get rid of, and they can spread like wildfire in your rabbitry and really affect the productivity of your herd. So you also want to check the bottoms of their feet. You want to make sure that they're there's no sores or bleeding. A nice plush foot pad like Samson has here is great. If you have hawk sores, it can just really like, just like the ear mites affect their productivity. You're all right. They can, if it's really bad, they can also get hawk sores on their front, but usually they're just localized to the back here. I wouldn't necessarily bring something like that home as a breeder if you saw scabbing or bleeding back here. You also do want to check their genitalia. Make sure if you're buying a buck that he is a buck. This is a common, common mistake that people make. See here, he's got his testicles are showing because he is an older buck. Um, it's a lot harder to tell with young kits. If I hold his tail in between two of my fingers here and pull back on his genitalia with my thumb, I can see that he is in fact a male. 
So lastly, you wanna check and make sure that the rabbit's teeth are lined up. The rabbit's top teeth should come in front of the bottom teeth and they should be of good length. You don't want any crazy crooked teeth going on. Bad teeth affect their ability to eat and their ability to eat affects the way that they grow and that the way that they can produce. So you want them to have good healthy teeth so they can pass good genetics along. A good healthy buck like this should produce well for about five to eight years. The does can go for about four years and sometimes even longer. I'm gonna place in the description box below a couple resources that I have that will help you find quality breeding stock in your area. It can be very hard to find great quality rabbits, especially if you rely on places like Craigslist and maybe even your local farm store. Sometimes something labeled Californian or New Zealand isn't actually a great representation of either breed. And so you want to be careful and make sure that those weight minimums have been met historically by the breeder and that the rabbits overall look good and are healthy. When you're buying rabbits, it doesn't hurt to check out the facilities of the place that you're buying your rabbits from. It's not unusual to see piles of manure underneath cages, but you really should not be smelling basically anything at all. I mean, it's going to smell like a barn, but you shouldn't be taken aback with this very heavy ammonia smell. There should be a lot of airflow in the rabbitry and the cages should be clean. Essentially, if you can see that your breeder takes good care of their rabbits, you can ensure that you're getting a healthy stock. We have a lot of new subscribers to the channel, and if you haven't seen our Raising Rabbits series, I'm going to link that up here. It's got a lot of really extensive and thorough information about why and how to raise rabbits. We much prefer raising rabbits as a white meat source on our homestead versus raising chickens. I go into the ins and outs of all of that in this video right here. Samson, you are a good model. You were. Good job.